Lucky us. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm Courtney Turner. I'm the, uh, one of the new special education teacher specialists. Um, I'm kind of the Southern Graysonville Down Compliance ESY and um, reading. And I'm Andrea Gerard. I am the special education teacher specialist for Center Centerville Up. And my specialties will be of technology and the assistive technology is for the whole county and then also math. Yeah, ESY obviously the whole county. So we cross paths a lot. So just because we're Southern Peter doesn't mean we'll all be up in Southersville or Churchill or you know crossing paths at that point. Um, go, ahead. go ahead. All right. So today it's about goals and having those goals align with the data collection that you're using. And um, so the objective is that you're going to be able to make goals and objectives with all the essential components and explore data collection tools that are consistent for documentation. So, um, so where is this coming from? And so why, where is this coming from? This is coming from MSDE, uh, from the state audit, or from the audit, and then also from state complaints. And is it good? Now I'm like all nervous because I don't know if I'm going. Okay, good. All right. So I know and I understand it seems like things are always changing and it feels like it is more work. But realistically, this isn't going to be more work. It should make things easier. So the more we're compliant, if we're not compliant, then we end up having to do a lot of those. That's where a lot of those stupid little paperwork things come through and all those policy changes and it ends up putting all kinds of layers of stuff that we really don't want to have to go there. If we're just compliant and we stick with it and we're doing a good job, get, keep the state off our back, then um, it's less work. And then also we lose money if we're not compliant and that's, that's never good because then we have to do more with fewer resources. Also, if you keep the data collection in mind when you are writing your goals, it ultimately makes things easier. So if you have that near that, just like when we do lesson planning, if you have the end in mind, it makes things easier. Um, so this is, um, sorry. Uh, and this is a goal in data collection. It's being modified from Carol Cork. This came down from um, MSCE. She gave a training to our um, IEP chair people. So if you were at any of those meetings, you saw parts of this. So we're using pieces of that to now share it with everybody else because this is being mandated from the state because of our audit, basically. <clears throat> so the types of IEP goals. So you have your standard grade levels. You have your enrolled grade level standards. You have your below grade level standards. And then you have your functional skills. On every child's IEP, there must be at least one grade leveled standard. Now I know that's easier said than done with your Park D's and your children who are functioning extremely low, but this can be done through the types of conditions, the types of materials, the methods of assessment, those sorts of things. But every child must have one grade leveled standard for their grade. Doesn't have to be for each content area, just one. So if you have it in reading, you don't have to have it in math. If you have it vice versa, just one. And then obviously you're below grade level standards. You're going to align with the um, standards as well, um, but cater it more towards them. And then your functional skills is really your, you know, your Park D, your really functioning below. We're working on those really foundational skills. I would like to add that although you only have to have one, Keep in mind that most of our students are working towards a diploma, and in order for them to reach those standards and to close that gap, they should be working at the, towards those grade level standards. So it's okay to have all of yours be grade level standards. You just have to have one, okay? All right, a few reminders. Um, with our present levels, when you're doing that present level, and I know we're switching gears from goals to present levels, but it all ties back. With the present level, you have to have a grade level. You can't say below grade level. You have to say second grade level, third grade level, whatever it is. You have to have that. And that's for those content standards. 
Um, also, when you're writing your goals, you need to make sure that you add, you click the little button that adds it to whatever standard it is that it's connected to. So this is where we're talking about. The level of performance should say a specific grade level. It can't just say below grade level because that means nothing. What does that mean? So you have to be tying it to the grade. It has to be a number there to support that. And then um, these were another thing that people were not doing. So these alignments to the standards, you should be clicking on them. You should be aligning them to the Maryland State curriculum. These were often just not filled out on the IEPs. Speech, there is, um, Betsy, we were talking about this the last session. There is to be linked to the listening and speaking um, standards on the Maryland State curriculum. Yes. yes. Well, the objectives will Yeah, so this is in that goal piece. And your objectives will be listed, and then this is at the bottom. And in terms of the, um, the present level, uh, we don't get grade levels. Right. So we are able to say below developmental age. Right, and that's really pertaining to speech. Whereas we're talking academics, there needs to be a grade level. How about three-year-olds? <clears throat> yes, age. Ages would be equivalent to their grade level at that point, yes. Also, with behavior goals, you don't have to have that grade level, but for um, those content levels, you do. Okay, so these are the essential components of IEP goals and objectives. We had SMART goals, and uh, really, we're not getting rid of SMART goals. We're building upon SMART goals, because if you look at all of these essential components, if you have all of that, you're going to have a goal that's a SMART goal. So uh, unfortunately, though, it doesn't have a nice little acronym like SMART. It's got the C-O-C-M-T. So what I do that helps me is I think of, come on, crazy math teacher, and then I picture Mar Marlo Coppage in my head. If any of you know Marlo, she is wonderfully crazy. <laughs> She's a great teacher. So uh, that's what I use. You come up with whatever works for you, but it doesn't make that nice little acronym, I know. So with that, one of the first components for that you have to have, one of those essential components, is the conditions. Within conditions, there are multiple things that you can have in there. Something that I like to use is I like to use their supplementary aids and services. You don't have to ha use their supplementary aids and services. That would fall under um, assistance, their supplementary aids and services, or even sometimes materials. Right, but you have to have one of those things in the conditions. So what does that look like? So here we have, the condition is the highlighted part. Given a Lexile 450 level passage text, is that a, is that a condition? Yep. These ones I'm gonna kinda go through and the next ones we'll do thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, this one, next one, there's nothing there. Um, there's no condition, there's no given. The eight multi-step algebraic problems and the manipulatives, visual aids as needed, those are both conditions, so that one is good. And then this next one doesn't have any condition. It doesn't have that given statement. All right, so behavior, do thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you think that this one, this first one, the read, the read aloud, is that an observable behavior? Thumbs up. <laughs> um, analyze a wide variety of patterns and functional relationships using the language of mathematics. Solve the problems. It is in there, it says correctly, right? Up, up yes, right. yep. Solve the problems correctly. Because you yes. can see them solving the problems. What about... Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what about... That's okay. Uh, demonstrate the ability to stay on task, refocus attention to assignment and task orientation. Behavior you can see. Sorry, I gave that one away. No. That's okay. Because stay on task is a vague statement, and because you're staying on task and I'm staying on task is... So staying on task isn't specific enough. Sorry, I'm just repeating it for the, for the microphone. 
<laughs> that um, staying on task, you need to have that be more observable. What does it look like to stay on task? All right, criteria. 85 words correct per minute on the passage over three consecutive trials. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. Uh, with 65% accuracy on three different teacher-made tests. Up, down. <laughs> Solve the problems correctly. And it also has eight there. Oh, yeah, sorry, eight. Solve eight problems correctly. <coughs> the eight is what makes it. And in order to succeed. Yeah, that's, that's not a specific criteria. And then the, ne the next one is the methods of measurement. So looking at the first one, as measured by a running record of correct words and number per minute. Is that a method of measurement? Thumbs up, thumbs down, yes. Next one, by the number of correct problems on a teacher-made test. Yes. Right, and we're looking just if there's a, met, um, a method of measurement. That's really what we're looking for, and then we'll tie it all back together. Yes. And then the last one is measured by curriculum-based assessment. Is that a method of measurement? Yes. And then the last one, does anyone see a method of measurement? No. Okay. So then this is... Um, so this is it put all together with each component highlighted. The condition in green, behavior in red, so on and so forth. The only thing that you don't see up there is the time frame. And that is largely because of space. I didn't want to bombard you with even more text on a single page because it's already bad enough. Um, also, that time frame can be in your goal component. So, yeah, you know, so when you... Drop down thing at the top and you can't close the page anyways unless you fill out. Sorry, you can't close the page unless that time frame is in there. So that can be used as your time frame. You don't need to, on every single goal, write out by December 2018 because it's a drop-down thing right at the top. So, you know, and then for your objectives, people choose to do that as well, but it can just be linked to that goal date. You don't have to specify in your objectives by October 2018, by December, by this, by this. You do not have to do that and you give yourself that year to be able to do it. Because your objectives also need to have each of these components. That's what they're looking for, best practices. Okay, so if you noticed on the previous page, the first and the third one had all of the components. It was all there, but the, but the second and fourth one did not. So taking a look at this one, in the interest of time, I'm going to show you one way to fix this up. It had the criteria and it had a method of measurement, but it didn't have a condition or an observable behavior. So I added that. That's just one example of one way to fix this up. This next one, it's your turn. So at your tables, talk about ways that you can fix up this goal so that it has all of those components in it. We're going to kind of pull back together. So does anyone want to share their, what they've come up with? Yeah. Um, well, we had the discussion back here that we felt like that was too many things. Yeah. Um, like it wasn't as our specific, what, what is the behavior? It looked like we were all about staying on task with the work. So we could get you as a assignment, you kind of reworded it. Okay. That, yeah. And then figured you could attach into those little behaviors in the objectives. <laughs> What we wrote was during over, we didn't know what the instruction was, but right. during over construction um, or during independent work, whatever you wanted to say, Alicia will complete 75% of a given assignment um, with no more than three prompts in a given class period. Right. Uh, so, a quick summary for because the microphone didn't pick. Um, so what they did is they looked at that and said that's, that's too much for the goal. The main thing that it's looking at is the staying on task. And then what they did is 
felt that the other components of that should be put into the objectives. And then they gave a goal that had all of those components. So I'm not going to reread your goal because I don't remember every single thing you had in it. But um, that's a good approach. And then that way you're keeping it targeted and then you're keeping it to that um, observable behavior. Okay. Anyone else have so what we did is we decided that um, task completion was our, um, our really our goal. So what we did was during a 30 minute individual, you know, individual task, um, Alicia, eh, Alicia, ooh, wait a minute. Yes, when given a pre-taught visual strategies checklist, Alicia will complete the task with 80% accuracy on three out of four trials given fading verbal prompting. And then our objectives would show the reduction of those prompts. Anyone else have a really great one they want to share? All right. okay. And then we made one too, so. Oh, that was for the oh. last one that I made okay. one. This one I didn't make one. Um, okay, so then with your objectives, as mentioned, the objectives, they're really looking for having all of these components in each objective as well. So you can change any one of these components in your objective as a part of meeting that goal. I have um, method of measurement in red, and that's because I would be very, very cautious about that. We really want to have consistency in our measurement, so that's the one thing that I would not change. Uh, but the other things, you can change the conditions, what the behavior is, and you can scaffold it, or you can also change it for that criteria saying that we're going to do, um, you'll see in this next one, like 40% accuracy, then 60%, so on and so forth. So this one is done where it's um, changing that percent correct. Yes. So I noticed that on this, for this particular, I'm not sure if you tell. Um, the two objectives have April and then October. Okay. Are there other two other objectives? Yeah, these are just examples. Like, okay, this is just the whole thing. Okay. I think that it that is shortened in order to, um, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So. It, Ideally, you should have three objectives, and then your fourth one would be your goal, so that when you're reporting on progress, you have objective one for the first quarter, objective two, second quarter, objective three, third, and then the fourth is your goal. So here's another one uh, where the changing conditions and behavior were done. So again, you can have it where you're increasing that percentage or where you are scaffolding it and it's benchmarked. So this is an example of it being benchmarked. You're just expecting more and more from the student. And then this is another one, it, again, changing. It's benchmarked, but with reducing that support. So you're fading that support. Does anyone have any questions about And this will be shared, so it's a little bit bigger for you to see. I know it's part of the Yeah. This will be the real problem to share. OK, so let's talk data. Uh, the biggest thing that we need to be sure to do is we need to have consistency. We need to have consistency within tracking progress on that goal. And then we also need to have consistency year to year when we're tracking progress on that present level. So what you should be doing is taking a look at what was done prior and building on that and using that same method of measurement so that there is that consistency and we can really track to see whether or not we're closing that gap for these students. So with that being said, per the boss, um, we are to upload our data sheets to Maryland Online. Wait, not completely filled out, not meaning like all of your data that you're collecting, your blank form. So whatever tool you're using to collect data needs to be uploaded into Maryland Online. That way, grade to grade, school to school, teacher wins the lottery, whatever the case may be, that the next person can pick it up and say, this is what was happening or this is what you were doing. So it's just the blank one. You don't need to be uploading your completed data sheets every month. It's just the blank tool that you're using to collect. So what if we 
<laughs> um, Jolene, what if they're using ones online? Sorry. So the answer to the question is that if you're using the goal matrix, that's perfectly fine. But if there's nothing up uploaded, then the assumption is that's what you're using. I'm also going to add one thing to that. I question with the goal matrix, does the goal matrix include, does it in your matrix include what the goal is? Yes. Okay. So if you We need to be sure that what you're including if is that somebody can pick up and start right where you were at. If you were to win the lottery and not come back tomorrow, somebody can come in. Or, yeah, I mean, there's been several situations where teachers have left mid-year and it's leaving other teachers in the dark because there was nothing done and no communication before they left and it left big holes that we have to take a year to clean up. So just making this before or making this happen now will create it easier in the future. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I know this is really more of a something that I hear a lot at the secondary level. We don't have STAR, we don't have Brigance, we don't have this or that or the other thing. What are some of the things that I can use? So, um, 
Goalbook has a lot of useful tools. And again, at the elementary level, you're going to be doing more of that daily data collection. But when we're going to the high school, we might be looking at when we're developing our goals, that we're taking this, um, the, the, the skill, and then we are scaffolding our objectives to be more rigorous. Well, there are assessments writing Goalbook that scaffold that rigor. And so if you're writing your goal based on those standards and the, the specific skill that is um, in goal book, and then you look at this data collection from the beginning, how it is you're going to be measuring that object, those objectives uh, for your progress reports, then it will be a lot easier to write your goal and it will be a lot easier when you're doing that data collection at progress report time to get that data. So this is just an example of what some of those assessments on Goalbook look like. I wanted the, the secondary people to know that there is an awful lot there now for secondary that hadn't been there before. So what a lot of these are, these were um, behavior forms that were already on Weebly. And keep in mind, because your goal has to be an observable behavior, really any behavior data collection form could potentially be useful to you. So these are some of the ones that were already on Weebly. I know that we're also uploading more. Um, and Yeah, so on uh, Weebly, if you go, open the page, main page, it says data collection tools. Um, under there, there are now folders with some general data sheets. If you're having trouble where to start, these are some general ones that you can manipulate however you want. They're kind of blank. You can roll with them however you want. Then under reading, under math, there's even a life skills <coughs> section there, which I'm still we're still tooling with uploading. There are some things in there. I have found an amazing amount of data collection tools on Teachers Pay Teacher for free, but I can't share them on the website because it's for single use only. So there's another great place to take. If you have something that you're using that you'd like to share, please send it to me and I can do that. So they're up there to use if, if you need a starting point. Obviously, if you're the way you're doing it is making sense and you're doing good with your data collection, don't don't change your map don't change it because we're sitting here and telling you if you're it's making sense, you're writing goals and you're doing all these things, then it shouldn't be a problem. But there is a basing point to start with. Queen one, two, three. And then the behavior stuff's up there that Katie and Matt have put up there. It's been up there for a while. Um, and then Andrea has this daily goal check that's been used at the high school level in their behavior realm. She is the high school person, so I'm going to pass that. So for them, uh, it's really important that they collect that, data, that daily data. And how this is structured is by each class. So the first period teacher, second period teacher, third period, and so on. And then the goal would be the overall goal, and the objectives are listed. The nice thing about this is that it collects your data for you. So it gives you your percentages and things like that. So if you wanted to adapt this and change it to be something that you can use, that would be um, used at, for the elementary level, then I would um, you know, go ahead. It's, it's on Weebly, and you can manipulate it however you want. <coughs> oh, so if you open the page, it should have like a bunch of little squares, like IP forms. It should say data collection. It's like a little clipboard. Mm -hmm. Click in there, uh -huh. and then it should be those little box, those little folders. Yeah, general, editable, or just like blank ones, reading, pertaining to reading, math, life skills, right in there. So... Again, you don't have to use those. I'm not, we're not sitting here saying you have to use those. It's just if you need help with starting somewhere, there's some tools that you can have. Another tool that you can use is there's the CBM Warehouse. It's Intervention Central, and I believe the website's just uh, cbmwarehouse.com. Yes. It, it is linked in here, so uh, you can click through there. Um, what I like about it is I use it for the writing prompts a lot. It has a way to generate a prompt and then it has some norm reference so you know th that at the sixth grade level they should be writing so many words per minute and they should have a correct word sequence of 32 or whatever it is. Um, so it gives those norms and then you can use whatever you're using in the curriculum to generate those probes to do your progress monitoring.
Uh, Maryland Learning Links, I was a little disappointed that they didn't have more for data collection. I did find that they have some really great transition assessments. And I know that you're thinking, well, I'm elementary, I don't need transition assessments. But it really is, the state is looking at it as K, or I'm um, sorry, birth to 21 for transition, that we need to be thinking about it. So there are some great transition assessments. Uh, there's also a lot of resources from the state. Just wanted you to have this link so that you know that it's a tool out there. Has a lot of really good articles and uh, strategies, teaching strategies and lessons you can use. All right, so we got through this a lot faster than we did with the high school. <laughs> Are there any questions? No? All right, then I think that what a good use of your time could be is take a look at what's on there and see what data collections are already being, what we, what we provided, and then how, think about how you might tweak that for your students. Or take a look at some of your goals and see how you're going to tweak it for the next time. Mm -hmm.